Good morning and welcome back. I thought I'd record a, a quick video. I've seen, well, there's always comments online about QRM and tracing noise sources. Now, when I moved here, I was looking forward to low noise levels and I keep, in my previous videos, I keep saying how low a noise floor I've got and how incredible a place to live this is because of the the fact I can hear right down into the noise floor, which is fantastic. Except, as the weather has become a little bit colder, I've noticed periodically through the day I'll have wideband noise across predominantly 40 and 20 metres. Now, depending on the mode I'm working, this may or may not be a problem, but in the case of 20 metres especially, SSB voice, uh, it can completely destroy any reception. Uh, I think it peaks around S5 noise, so anything below S5 is, is lost to me, which is obviously most, <laughs> or a lot of the signals on HF are just gone in the noise floor. And the other issue I keep talking about, the 7300, uh, with the AGC off, if I'm working a data mode, that S5 noise floor across the whole of the band with the AGC off overloads the front end and I get the overload indicator lighting. So then I'm back to backing off the RF gain again and losing the weak signals anyway. So whatever I do, I'm, I'm a bit stuck. So I have tackled this over the last couple of months and the first... The first thing I did, uh, I have a couple of radios. I have a, an FT817 and I have a, an SDR, uh, which is it's based on an RTL dongle, but it's put in a, a case with some filters, some switchable filters, but that's pretty much irrelevant. Both of these devices are great for walking around. The FT817 is useful if it's switched to AM mode. You can hear an increase in noise, but you're not really seeing the spectrum. You're not seeing the, the QRM that I'm seeing on a, an SDR on the desktop or on the, the 7300. But it's still good as a, a rough indication, especially if you tune to a point in the band where you know there's a, a peak in, in interference. Uh, the laptop is really great because it is, as I said, it's based on an RTL dongle. You can walk around and you can see exactly what's happening on the spectrum. But time you're holding the laptop, the dongle, the USB cable, the antenna, it just gets a little bit unwieldy. So it's, it's a bit tricky. And when I've shot video for this, or f shot footage for this video, um, I've stuck with the 817 just because I've got to hold a camera as well and it's too much to hold. But yeah, the first thing I did is I, I ensured that the QRM wasn't coming from my house. So the easiest way to do that is to switch off the, the main circuit breaker to the whole house and run the radio off battery, which if you've got a, a laptop or an 817 is easy enough. Uh, on the desktop side, I just have a, a gel cell and I ran the 7300 off a gel cell. And this is when I discovered, actually, that I did have QRM coming from the house. I had uh, a couple of Chinese Woolwort power supplies, which one in particular was a charger for... A, actually, it was a Samsung charger for a Samsung mobile phone. When it was plugged in, it was quiet. When it was plugged in and charging, there was a S7, S9 noise. Uh, across, I think it was 40 meters, which was not so good. But yeah, I switched off the main breaker to the house. I then switched on each breaker for each circuit individually. And then at some point, you'll notice a, a major increase in noise or maybe a, a gradual increase in noise. And you can work out what circuits in the house are causing the problem and then trace it to individual power supplies typically or laptops or TVs or anything like that. So that was the first thing I did, and I was very happy originally to, to get rid of that noise. Then this other noise started in the winter, which I assume is a heating system or something. We, we have heated floors here, we have heat pumps. So again, the first thing to do was rule out this house, which I did fairly quickly. Cut the power, 
run off battery and the noise is still there. So the next step then was to do a, a walkabout outdoors. And I've done this multiple times and I've, I've got a video here where I'm just doing the, the same thing again, just to demonstrate how it's done, walking around with the 817. The, the first clip here, uh, I go straight to where I know the noise is coming from, one of my neighbours, and just demonstrate the increase in noise from moving the radio closer to the, the uh, edge of my property, getting closer to the neighbour's house. But I also do a full walk around of, of my property here, just demonstrating that generally the, the noise is low. It's definitely, the, the QRM is definitely coming from this one neighbour. Um, so, yeah, I've hit a bit of a problem here because I, I know where the noise is coming from. I know it's this neighbour, uh, but there's a huge language problem. So not only do I not know really any Finnish, beyond the basics, <laughs> I would have to somehow explain my hobby, what the problem is, what I think the problem may, might be on their side, and then try and negotiate. It's just, it's going to be a, a nightmare, so I'm, I'm kind of stuck at this point. But I'm hoping this video would be useful for others, because at least you can see how I've gone about this. And I, I know it's, it's simple, everyone does the same, but I think to a lot of newcomers it may be not so obvious to do a, a walkabout. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else useful to say. I, I don't think so. Uh, the only thing is, on whatever radio you're using to do the walkabout, you just need to make sure that the antenna connected to it is kind of resonant on the bands that you're getting the QRM. Because if you just, for example, stick a bit of wire in the antenna socket or you use a VHF, UHF antenna just because it's convenient, it probably won't reveal anything on the, the lower HF bands just because the antenna is so ineffective. And the other thing I forgot to mention is uh, if it is QRM coming from your own property, uh, it's worth checking, disconnect the antenna and see whether the noise stops. Uh, this way you're working out whether the QRM is coming in via the antenna or via the main supply. And if you have a, a noisy switch mode power supply, then the noise may well be coming in through the mains. But it's also not quite as straightforward as that because even though it's a switch mode power supply and it may not be being picked up purely by RF, if your antenna cable is running adjacent to any mains cables in the house, you may not be receiving the RFI through the mains directly through the power supply to the radio, but you may be coupling it with the antenna feed so it's neither being picked up by the antenna or being injected or yeah, injected to the receiver through the, the power supply, but some sort of coupling afterwards in between the two. So I think that's it. Um, I hope you don't have problems like I have, although mine is very intermittent and generally it's, it's not causing me a huge problem. Uh, but it is a little frustrating to spend money on the hobby and get a uh, new radio and more equipment and and then have this intermittent issue. But the the trouble is with mine is it appears I run out into the garden or I was running out into the garden. I was running around originally checking my house and I would think, well, I can't find this. I, I, I can't find the source. Ten minutes later, I'd come back into the shack and I'd realise that the QRM has stopped. Uh, this is when I started making notes on a piece of paper. This time it starts, this time it stops, this time it starts, this time it stops. And I noticed a kind of regular-ish pattern where it would predominantly happen in the mornings and it would come on, say, 9 in the morning and it would disappear at 9.30. And then it would be off for maybe half an hour, maybe an hour. And then it would come on for half, it would come on and then go off for another half an hour. So I'm thinking this is, especially as it's now coming into the winter time in Finland, I'm thinking it's a heating controller or some sort of power supply for a heating controller or PWM pulse width modulated something which is controlling heating. I, 
I don't know. Um, but if I look at the spectrum plot, I think there's about a 200, is it 150 or 200 kilohertz difference between the peaks. So I'm guessing that's the frequency that whatever power supply or controller is running at. It's probably a couple of hundred hertz, which if it was my house, I, it would give me more information to to search on. But as it's a neighbor's house, it's pretty much out of my control. But all these things are, are useful to look at. So sorry for the, the long rambling talk. Again, I've done this without any planning, uh, but I've, I've included some footage here of me running around in my dressing gown trying to find the source of the QRM this morning. So um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. And if you have any idea what this is, because uh, it is broadband, it's, it's not particular spikes like you'd see with a, a typical switch mode power supply, for example. And it is switched on and off periodically through the day. So I'm, I'm guessing it is a heating controller or water heater or underfloor heating or something like this. There's no solar power in the area. There's no electric fences. And generally the noise is very low. So it's definitely something which is switching on. But there we go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with my rambling again. And uh, if you do have QRM, best of luck in, in resolving it. It's a complete blight on the hobby at the moment. So, yep, 73s from me, Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra Papa November, aka M0 SPN in the UK.